<laughs> I, I got to sit back because I'm fidgety. Okay. She's fidgety, so she's going to sit back. <laughs> hey, everybody, it's Linda West. I'm here today with Janelle Ford. Normally, I would be able to put her name up there, but I'm in person with her instead of hey. over the Internet, like what I usually do. This is Linda West with Living Live with Linda. And one of the things I am so passionate about doing is learning more about what people are doing with their businesses so that I can share that with my audience. Janelle is a grant writer, professional grant writer. And I just want to introduce you guys to her because she is so full of knowledge, knowledge, not other stuff. <laughs> well, a little, little bit of that, <laughs> too, <yeah. laughs> that too. But she's uh, so amazing at what she does. And what I love the most about her is her personality because she's so much fun. Yay! No pressure, Janelle. <laughs> I'll try to, make, yeah, this is on grant writing. So, you know, I'll try to make it as fun. Try as to be possible. as boring <laughs> as possible. Yeah. Well, you know, you did that. The grant writing um, speaking thing for me for my nonprofit speaker series mm -hmm. about two and a half years ago, and everybody really had a great time because you know you always infuse your personality into the boringness, you know, of grant writing because it can be very tedious and boring, right? Yeah, well, you know, yeah, it can be painful. It can be downright painful. Oh my gosh! Like, <laughs> what, give me an example of the pain. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So let's. Because I'm sure a lot, like a lot of the pain can be caused by the clients not knowing what they want, mm -hmm. possibly. Yeah, well, I was thinking the pain of, uh, I just finished two major federal proposals. Each was 95 pages, about 60 pages of narrative. And oh. that was painful. <laughs> oh my God. How long does something like that take? Like you're a professional grant writer. So like how yeah. long did that take? Uh, you know, they released the request for proposal and they give you about 45 days. And so it's, you know, if you're just putting your project together when it comes out when the RFP is released, you're, you're behind. You should, if, especially if it's like a new program, mm -hmm. you really should take some time to develop it before, you know, before the RFP is released. Oh my Cause gosh. you need that time to sort of pull all the details together. Yeah. A lot of details. Mm, yeah. That's the pain. There's the pain right there. <laughs> so first I want to know is, um, can you guys hear us? And the reason I asked that, I see how long would the interview be? I answered that one. So the interview is going to be between 30 and 45 minutes, depending on how much fun Janelle is. Just kidding. <laughs> But I just I actually wanted to know if you guys can hear us because I'm trying out the different setup. I'm out of my house. Normally, I do the interviews in my house using BeLive. And so I'd just be interested to know if anybody can even hear us. I have no idea if we're just you know speaking and nobody can hear us. So maybe I can test that out real quick. Maybe I'll do that. Hold on a second. So why don't you tell us your background, like how you got into grant writing? I don't know if they can hear us. Oh, gosh. That would be bad. Okay, well, let us know if you can hear us because I don't see that you can. So, Whoa, okay. Yeah, so, so uh, what is my background? So I have been in fundraising for just about 20 years. Uh, and I actually, I was I'm kind of an accidental social worker. I thought about social work really okay, initially okay. and uh, worked for a human service provider. Uh, and I just kind of stumbled into it. It wasn't something I intentionally went into. I was always always naturally gifted with writing. I was in honors English and remedial math. <laughs> <laughs> I knew, yeah, math was not Yeah, right. my eighth grade geometry, um, geometry teacher said, you might as well just give up on math. I'm like, really? Like, I thought I was good, but I guess that D didn't equal I'm, good. I'm good with percentages and budgets and things like that, but not algebra. Okay, okay. So anyway, that wasn't going to work. But uh, I loved, uh, I, I have, I've always had a heart for service. So I always just wanted to give back. And uh, this uh, grant writing or fundraising really gives you the opportunity to see how all of the pieces come together in the community, how, how it all works. And I, and I've discovered that I enjoy the bird's eye view of that more than I missed sort of being involved mm. in the day-to-day -day watching people it's so it's so incredible to work with people and see them change just mm -hmm. to see them turn their lives around um but i i enjoy really all, all the big picture view of how it all comes together and how it works and so you get that vantage point in fundraising so so what's your you've done other kinds of fundraising besides grant writing right mm -hmm. like what's your um what's your experience with different types of fundraising oh i've done it all i have done everything in fundraising. We sound great by the way. 
away. Oh, good. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I, I've done everything in the sun under uh, with fundraising, except uh, I have I have I have limited experience in like the social enterprise space. You know, that's a whole that's really grown um, over the years. Mm -hmm. And I've never done a crowdfunding campaign, but you name it. I major gifts, plan gifts. Uh, I've done webs. I've done, I've a lot of time. I've had communications under my role, so I'm I know enough in that area to be dangerous. And so yeah, <laughs> <laughs> who else knows enough of something to be dangerous? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, yeah like I, know, I know just enough about some things. You know, it's like well, the jack of all trades, master of none. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah. So how did you get into then? To grant writing because uh, you've done yeah. all these different mm -hmm. things. So what brought you to grant writing? That's really your special specialty, right? Like like your niche. Kind yeah, of? yeah, yeah. So when I first started in fundraising, um, I I just I've I've been able to just achieve a lot of success with grants. The biggest award that I've I've secured is about twelve million dollars, and that was to expand substance abuse treatment in. A couple of counties in Utah. How and, did that feel, though? Oh it, man, because it like, was awesome. Twelve million. Yeah, that's, that's what it's about. That's really what it's about. It's about it's about the cause and my passion for the cause, and I want them to have the money. <laughs> they, right. You know, I mean, the, the difference that that makes is just incredible. And that's yeah. and when you're when you're cranking on a document that's you know sixty pages, that's you have to sort of be passionate for the cause yeah, yeah. To, to pull out, pull that off. So, um, but I, so I guess uh, of all the techniques of fundraising, uh, I've experienced the greatest success in grant writing. And so mm -hmm. uh, I've been a development director for many years and, and that, and, and, and mostly in a generalist sort of role. So I did oversee all of fundraising and I actually had grant writers reporting to me at some point. So when I started my business, I just thought, okay, I'm going to sort of root this in um, what I know how to do well. And so I, and I was there so, when you made, <laughs> yeah, right, that's right. That's we right. were sitting at university club. We were looking out at the Harbor and you were like, Think I'm gonna leave my job and start my business, like, quit my job, yes, and do this. And that was in. I went all in in April of 2014, so yeah, about well, three years. And, and so, it's been like it's been amazing, right? I yeah, mean, it's been fun. Yeah. I really enjoyed it. I work for. I work with several nonprofits. I love the diversity of the work, um, and. I, my background is primarily in health and human services, but since I've started my business, I've, I've got clients that are in education, in the education space and arts mm -hmm. and culture, and it's been so fun to learn new things yeah. along the way. So, so let's, um, we're going to touch on some of the myths of grant writing, right? Like, cause there's a new grant, I mean, as a new nonprofit, like when I started my nonprofit, I was like, oh, there's grants all over the place. I kept hearing there's all this money and yeah. grants and I'll just apply. And of course I'll get them because of course they want, you know, me to get the money because I'm me, right? And it doesn't really work that way, yeah. right? Yeah. So what are some of the myths that you can like talk about today? Yeah, it's not uncommon for me to get calls from nonprofits that are just really new and they say, well, I have my 501c3, I'm ready for a grant. And, and, it, and it does, it takes a little bit of time to be ready to, to get a grant. So, um, I guess one of the most common myths is that, or the questions, I would say frequently ask questions that I get is, is do you work on a percentage basis? Mm -hmm. And that's, mm -hmm. and that is, uh, no, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a no, uh, that, that compensation by percentage or by commission is actually considered unethical in fundraising. Mm -hmm. And I'm just finishing a blog post about it, that, uh, when you think about the nature of percentage based compensation, that really is about personal gain. That's about you, you know, hitting your numbers and, and so you can get a bigger boat or whatever. It's, it's all, it's all rooted in that personal gain. Mm -hmm. So when you, personal gain and charity, those are two very opposite sort of, uh, right? Yeah. And so, uh, when you when you think about fundraising, it's it just doesn't work. So all the major charity watchdogs um, have position statements that it is unethical to pay your fundraiser on a percentage basis. Mm -hmm. So um, so I charge based on the amount of work that it takes to do what I do. Uh, and you do it like you've been doing it long enough. Can you kind of gauge like if you talk to a nonprofit and you know what kind of grants they're going out after? Can you kind of tell? 
about how much time it's going to take you ahead of time? Yes. Like I'll look at the, the request for proposal and just what is the scope of work that's going to be going into this. So that 95, that 95 page proposal was yeah. about a hundred hours. <laughs> and wow. That was a mean one. You know, that was me. But of course that was a, that was a government one. And that was, you know, a couple hundred thousand dollars a year for multiple years. It was, you know, those are, yeah, they're, yeah. You have to put in a little more for that. <laughs> <laughs> so with those, um, would you say that the government ones are the most difficult as far as like the grant writing and, and getting everything? Cause you got to make sure you get mm -hmm. all the questions answered, right? I mean, you can't skirt over some because they're going through the oh, fine yeah. tooth comb, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. Uh, a government is probably the most complex to receive uh, both on the front end of receipt, which maybe it, maybe it makes sense on the, uh, to get the money. It's really detailed. Some of the questions that they, they have are, it's like a different language, you know, real, some, some, mm. some government sources are just, they okay. speak a different language. You have to learn that language. Uh, and and address every single point. It's all they try to make it as objective as possible, and it's about your your score. Uh, with other sources like foundations and corporations, it's more about your relationship, your connection, and how much they know about you, how how what your impact has been mm -hmm. in the community. But government and government is about about that too. But they try to make it a, an objective process, and so they it's about how well you score. But it also is very difficult to administer. You have to have right. a lot of different systems in place in order to make good on that money. Um, they they there's a lot of rules that they make you follow. So. If I'm going to take um take us off just a little bit, and that's talking about um, like executive directors and nonprofits, because I know a lot of times when nonprofits are starting, they really don't have an intention of um, taking a salary. But then as they get into, it, they're like, you know, we could make so much of a bigger impact if we actually if I was doing this full time, for example. And so, how does somebody make a transition from being a nonprofit that has zero? What? Oh, my mom. Hi, mom. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> he's so, <laughs> he's so somebody making that transition though from uh, not bringing in a, like not taking a salary to making that transition to, you know, I want to be the executive director. I want to do this full time. You were bringing in enough donations. How do they make that transition into something like that? Uh, I, I think that it's a, it's a, it's a challenging, uh, well, it's, 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 it's a tough decision to make because when you decide to hire someone, when you decide to be, have an employee, it, that, that salary is kind of a black hole. It's not going away. You have to come up with it this year for that. Mm -hmm. And then every year subsequent to that, and you're going to add three to 5% every year for just cost of living and right. you know, stuff goes up. And so really the, the, the thing you have to discern is if you can, bite that off I buy, you know, and, and sustain it, maintain it. You have to have that consistent presence if you're going to do that. Uh, but that's a big decision. Most nonprofits will start with a couple of volunteers and, mm -hmm. uh, and then at some point, if they grow, if their programs are making a difference, they've got to hire, they've got to hire some staff. Yeah. Some staff you know, so. Yeah. If you want to grow and make a bigger impact, mm -hmm. you can't yeah. do it yourself. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Well, yeah. And it's, you can burn out your board members. Yes, that's right. right. Like, that's right. I want to talk about board member burnout? Like, have you ever experienced that as a board member yourself? Oh, well, I've experienced burnout. That's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> you have to check out for a while, and you get yeah. crabby about things. But yeah, you just have to take care yeah. of yourself. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. So nonprofit boards, um, you know, they start as volunteers, and then at some point they have to hire staff, and yeah. they have to grow in sophistication. Uh, and so it, I guess if I, I, you know, as because I'm approached by new nonprofits and they just really want, they have just all this passion. They just want to get going and they want to just raise a ton of money right now. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what can they do? What can they really do to move themselves towards being competitive for grant funding? I, you know, I'll tell them that, you know, most of the grant sources, most grant funding sources will require at least two years of operation and sometimes five oh, okay. before they're going to be giving you any money. And the reason they, they have that policy is that they want you to be sustainable. Mm -hmm. They want your organization to be, be making a difference in the community and it's got to be sticky. They got to, you got to have some sustainability and it takes a couple of years to, to do that. 
Um, so I guess in that couple of years, what would I do? I would, I would go out and I would meet with anybody, anybody that is a, attached to my cause area, okay. who's serving that same population, who are the agencies that are doing work in that space who are funding those those organizations who those are your people i would sort of kind of get who to know who those are i would understand the layout of of what the services are and then whatever services i um created would i would figure out how to articulate how they fill a gap in the community because that's really mm -hmm. they don't you know sometimes services are duplication is needed sometimes because the need is so great but uh, you know, you really should figure out how you differentiate your services from everyone else. Yeah. And there's a couple of ways you can do that. I know one, like just Google, you know, another one is you can go to LinkedIn and you can look for like, mm -hmm. what are the search? If you're helping homeless, for example, you can do a search for homeless and I, LinkedIn and just, I would, I would go to two one one. On San Diego, they I have heard of that. Really? Is oh it dot gosh. gov? It must be no. Gov. Pick no. up the phone and call two one one. And say, say I'm homeless and I need somewhere to go. Or, or you can say, you know, they're gonna, they have the database of every human service, and, and this is about human services, I guess, uh, every resource in the community. And they, mm. they can give you a few options. They'll ask you a few things about yourself. They'll screen you a little bit, and then they'll give you a few resources that you can go after, so. Okay, and then I was referring to, if you're a nonprofit who serves the homeless yeah you can find other people like and you, you were talking call, about and so, you could call them and say you know what i mean i'm a nonprofit. i serve the homeless i want to con get connected with all the agencies that serve the homeless oh, awesome. they give you a list <laughs> that's all give me I like know. my ten, wait i got 10 i, I, can't ten for that one. Heard of two I have one. not heard of two on one i don't get out much <laughs> but that is so cool that's an awesome do you know is that um nationwide or is mm -hmm. okay yeah so i i'm not sure how it is nationwide. So in Utah, they have, I, I mean, it's all over. Um, but it's an, 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 the agency, like two in one San Diego. So okay. there's a, a nonprofit here that runs that service. It's the same kind of service around the nation. Mm -hmm. It's 211. It's information and referral services. So let me ask you, if you're a new nonprofit and you want to get on their list, probably just contact them and say, oh, yeah. hey, I'm a new nonprofit. I'm you know, helping. I'm, like, I'm thinking of somebody in particular who helps the homeless in San Diego. They're brand new. So that's why I keep bringing that mm -hmm. up. But she can just call up and say, we're a new nonprofit. We'd like yep. to add it to your list. Huh? Absolutely. Oh, and what? they, that, that's that's what they do. That is their mission. They want to know all of the nonprofits and what the services that okay. are provided because they are really a connector between the people who have needs and the, and the agencies out there who are addressing those. So okay, yeah. So let's say um, now you're two years into your nonprofit. You have mm -hmm. um, you know like you've got some donations have been coming in. You've been helping the community and you're tracking that. Yes, you have by data pictures and your, video yes. and. Yeah, and, and data, and, like numbers, like how many people improved their knowledge or how many people made it to housing, how many people went home clean and sober, whatever your services are. You need to be able to articulate the what they call outcomes or the difference mm -hmm. that happens, you know, from your services. That's what that's what donors want to invest in. They are investing in the solution to a problem and you are providing that solution. And so you need to be able to quantify it. And so they want to see your track record. Even mm -hmm. after two years, you can still have something. Yes, shows yes. That. Use whatever you have uh, to create a program and collaborate, collaborate with these other groups, figure out how you can create partnerships to maximize that those resources, collect data, get to know the players in the space, both the funding sources and the, you know, agencies. And in two to five years, if you, if you can quantify the difference you're making, uh, and you are, you've, you've got a donor database, you know, how to keep track of your friends, right. you're probably ready to dip your toe into the world of grant, grant writing, awesome. grant seeking. So. so that's great because like, I know when I started my nonprofit, I didn't know anything about tracking data. So we mm -hmm. didn't, we didn't track anything. Yeah. You know, we knew what donations were coming in and that was mm -hmm. it really, but mm -hmm. we didn't know about like tracking how many people we were helping along the way. Yeah. And, and I would say that if, and, and in general, even the big nonprofits struggle with this piece. Uh, if you can figure that out, if you can be really highly competent in gathering data and demonstrating the impact of your program, 
you're going to, that's going to give you an edge. I mean, that's really why people are giving, giving money to you is because of that solution. It's that difference that you're making. So, so being organized is mm-hmm. key yeah, yeah. to this. And for you as a grant writer, when somebody comes to you and you <laughs> ask for that information, hopefully they have it. <laughs> yeah. Some of it, some of it, I mean, if it's their first time dipping their toe in the water, there's definitely a lot of pre-work that has to be done right. to, to get them ready. I usually will recommend we do a case for support, which would really answer all those questions that a grant funder might ask and it it kind of forces them to flush out the answer sometimes they're not they have never been asked these sorts of questions and so it kind of helps them flush out the answers and yeah. then and then it serves as a tool to to um complete the application so you've got all your answers already and you always have to sort of modify the response to the application obviously but um it, you know it's good to just answer those questions first and yeah. And the one thing I think I've um, learned, you know, just by knowing you for the last couple of years is that uh, is how important it is to meet with you when you're getting started. So that way, like, it's like you're starting your nonprofit, your brand new, say, for example, meet with you so you know what to do. So that way, when it's time for you to get funded, you've done all that stuff along mm-hmm, the way, right? Mm-hmm. Now you have, um, are you working on a program, like um, yes, a I, training or something? Yes, I have some big ideas, and that's about all they are at this point. Okay, good, big ideas. <laughs> no, that's, no, no. that's where it all starts, though. It's better as no, I do have some plans. I because because I've just had so many there's so many folks out there who have started new nonprofits they are full of passion they want to make a difference but I, it just feels like there's not much out there mm-hmm. to guide them through this process of how do you get grant ready how do you yeah. you know get up and going um, and and so I I'm, I'm actually in the I'm hopeful to put together. I am going to. I'm not hopeful. <laughs> Give me a date. No, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to put together an e-course, and I'm also thinking oh, cool. about like a workshop series and uh, and even maybe a coaching program as well. Okay. Thinking. Yeah, because that may, that just makes sense. Yeah, to, that'd be great to provide that assistance. Because it is hard. Like there's there's so much information out there, but you know we can get lost in the information mm-hmm. when we're searching, especially if we don't know what we're searching for. And so yeah. that's like the it's like the chicken for the a thing, and I know that's like what I had. I was up against when I started my nonprofit. Is like I don't know where to start, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So, like, where do you start? And then I don't even know how to ask. Like, where do I start? <laughs> and it's and it's a whole other like, language. Oh, yeah. yeah, I mean, most folks don't realize, or a lot of nonprofits don't realize they have to be registered with the attorney general's office before right. they can fundraise. And you know, there's just things like that that they just don't. How many of you are saying what? We got to do that. <laughs> Go to a if well, it depends on which state you're in too. True, every true. state is different. Uh, but uh, yes, yeah, so the attorney general's office, I believe, manages it for I don't know for California and Utah. <laughs> oh, do they do the same? They do both states. All the requirements like, are different from state oh, by okay. state. Like the state oh, I see that, what you're saying. Yeah. So go to in, in Utah, you would go to the attorney general, Utah mm-hmm. attorney general. Yeah. So the nonprofits have to be registered. To be legitimate, to legitimately fundraise, fundraise. I also have to be uh, registered in the state as a fundraising council or fundraising consultant, uh, and and the requirements are different. So I'm registered in both Utah and California. And that's a great thing right there. Like if you're looking for somebody that would help you write grants or to do fundraising for you, ask them to show proof of that. Right? Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. So that absolutely. way you can at least see that they're on the up mm-hmm, and up, and mm-hmm. they know what they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. So sometimes I, I know that there are. Uh, I, I've been told by a few nonprofits that they know of a few people who will do the grants as a percentage, mm-hmm. and I would caution that they are not doing either. They don't know enough to operate ethically and that's right. a, that's gonna, that's right. gonna that's cause good. some problems right right <laughs> or uh they are um just ignoring it and just doing it and 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 the big risk is that if you use them and they and the, the money comes in and you pay them with a part of that money mm-hmm. and the donor finds out about that that's a breach of trust and in nonprofits all you have is your integrity and you just don't want to go down that road so yeah. you know just just when you when you hire a fundraiser you have to look at it like it's an investment it's going to take some resources to to invest in the potential of your organization if that makes sense and here's the other thing is um 
just because you hire a grant writer doesn't mean the grant is going to be approved, right? It's right. not like, oh, good, I'm going to hire Janelle mm-hmm. and I'm going to get you know, $12 million. Yeah, so yeah. It doesn't always happen because right. the grantor decides who they're going to donate the money mm-hmm. to or grant yeah. the money to. Yeah, and so I'm not going to I'm not going to write grants for any nonprofit that I don't feel like that they would be competitive. Mm-hmm. Uh, that they're going to have these these infra- infrastructure is going to be in place. They're going to have uh, the they're going to be ad- addressing a real need in the community. That all those things are going to be there. That is, that they are going to be competitive to get that grant. It's just resources are too precious. I'm not going to spend my time doing that with for nonprofits. Uh, and but on the whole, whether you get the grant or not, and I would say in general in fundraising, it really has more to do with the organization's uh, health and well-being. Mm-hmm. Like you know, it's got to be a healthy organization and has to have a positive reputation. There's more going on there that determines whether you get the money than the skill of your grant writer. If that grant funder loves you enough, they'll overlook typos. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's about the relationship. Okay. So yeah. I've heard that too, like establishing the relationships with everything. Mm-hmm. You know, like it has to do with like the you know venture capital or or whether you're getting sponsors for things, vendors, it's all about the relationships because mm-hmm. they if they trust you already, at least you have that notch. Right. So like when they're looking at all the other grants, you know, they're like, you know, we know these people and we know they're true to their work. We know they're going to follow through. Yeah. We love what they're doing. Yeah. After the grant is approved. That's like when the real pain in the ass comes, right? It's like <laughs> all that work. You have to make sure you follow everything that they've written. Yeah. For the grant. Total. And I think that there's some strategy tips uh, or tricks there that you can uh, use that you should you should consider what your programs are and um, obviously you're gonna you want to get grant funds to pay for what you're currently doing and not have to always create new things mm-hmm. and and your grant funders are they're interested in uh, they're interested in your work it's all about passion it's they care about they care about the cause that you're the, the need area that you're addressing mm-hmm. the population, whether it's veterans or homeless or, you know, the arts and culture, whatever it is, they have a passion for that. Right. And, and so I lost my train of thought. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> hey, let's see if there's any questions here. Let's see. It's, it's so far away. Uh, my, can you see those? <laughs> yeah, Janelle Ford is awesome. Janelle Ford oh, is guys. awesome. Let's see. Let's see. What is it? Location? No, I don't see any it. questions. Okay, hold on. Let's see. How long has the interview be? You guys sound great. Okay, love you, Janelle. Deanna, Rupp, perfect for you. Awesome. Thanks for tagging people. I really appreciate that. And you guys, if you find that this is valuable, please share it out on your page because you know the more information that we can help with nonprofits, especially those new nonprofits, yeah. because. I think I, I know like when I went into it, like I was all starry eyed thinking that, like I said, you know, I'm just going to get all this money donated and, mm-hmm. and I'm going to be able to make a huge impact. I did make a big impact, but you know, not as much as I thought. And so I did, I was like, like doe eyed and starry eyed at the same time. Right? One was doe and one was star. <laughs> but yeah, so what is it that, um, well, how can people contact you? Oops, sorry. Yeah. Well, you're, you're welcome to uh, contact me through my website. If you're interested, I, I'll provide a 30 minute consultation to you. If you want to go onto my website, affordablefreelance.com, uh, there's a discovery questionnaire you can complete about your nonprofit. It just gives me a little bit of information about about who you are and you're welcome to share what your needs are and I am happy to schedule a call time with you to to talk through uh, what your needs are there I think I was able to, I put it in the comments let's see she knows truly a nonprofit yeah. expert you are a nonprofit expert <laughs> and it's so awesome and I loved your presentation that you gave at the nonprofit speaker series and and just you're so you're so, so full of knowledge so what do you see for yourself in five years well, what is like affordable? Maybe not five years. Let's say one year. <laughs> I in one year. Well, I'm my business is starting to grow, and so my my desire is to, I'm, my desire is to help lots of nonprofits. That's been mm-hmm. the funnest part of of be, working for myself. I, I, bef- before I would work for one nonprofit and just help them raise money. Now I get to work with lots and it's, I want to work with a lot of nonprofits. Yeah. I want to help a lot more nonprofits. And so I'm, I'm 
I have several nonprofits that I work with and doing grant writing and other project work. And so I'm looking to sort of hire some folks to help me with some of that so that I can mm. spend time doing more teaching and speaking and developing some of these new products so that I can help more nonprofits. Awesome. And so if anybody has an opportunity for her to speak, you know, please reach out to her. She's awesome. Just uh, always, uh, just a lot of information, a lot of I know, yeah. great Sometimes information. That's the hard part. Just it is the hard part. It down. <laughs> but you know, the thing is, is to like let people hear it so they know that it's out there. Mm -hmm. And because of what we don't know, we don't know. Right. right. And then once yes. you once mm -hmm. you touch it and you say there's this or there's that, they can think, oh, that's something I need to think about. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, they won't know. You know, that's the, yeah. the black hole, like you for said. For sure, for sure. Definitely a black hole out there. So, <laughs> and it's hard. Yeah, it's really it's really tough to know where to go and what to do and how to spend your how to focus your energies. Uh, I would if I were to start a nonprofit. Well, first of all, I wouldn't start a nonprofit. I would I would do a total environmental scan, and and if I was passionate about doing some work in the community, I would look at all of those organizations who were doing that mm -hmm. first and see if there was some way that I could partner or, or do something with them. I wouldn't, it's too much work to start a nonprofit and, um, you know, develop a board and all of these rules and it's, it's tricky. So I would try to find a way to not start a prop nonprofit. <laughs> well, I want to touch on that because I, I also give that advice when people come and ask me about nonprofit. And the reason I like that is you can, like, let's say there's a nonprofit that is doing what you like a lot, right? And you approach them and they're like, well, and you approach them with a new idea. Mm -hmm. Because maybe your idea is a little bit different than what they're doing. But you can go to them and say, you know, I love what you guys and I really do and I really want to volunteer for you. But I have this idea. Are you open for hearing it? And maybe they'll incorporate your idea into their program. Mm -hmm. And then maybe you become the program, program director for that little program inside of that nonprofit where you don't have to do all the work, like you said, like the nonprofit, yeah. mm -hmm. starting nonprofit, forming your board of directors and yeah, yeah your board of advisors and mm -hmm. all this mm -hmm. stuff and getting your own grants. No, they're getting the grants. They're doing all that. Yeah. You pr yeah. It's, and, and so I think that there's culture, culture has, uh, plays a role in some of that. Um, some organizations are been around so long that they're not going to be that flexible. <laughs> but, right. right and and I, I guess I would also say that not it's there's not one size that fits all. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, 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 so on one hand, I could say that you know all the all the old dogs in fun, in nonprofits would be like, yeah, nobody should start any nonprofit. There's ten thousand in San, you know. <laughs> right. And and that's true. There's and of course it's rooted in scarcity that there's you know, this finite amount of resources to go around and, and nonprofits can sort of live in that space, which is not healthy, but right. That's, that's, that's a topic for another, uh, another um, show. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yes, Living in scarcity versus abundance, yes, right? Yes. But, but then on the other hand, the IRS makes it really easy to start a nonprofit. Oh my gosh. I got mine so easy. in two weeks. Yeah. Like from the day I filed with the secretary of state to the day I got my 501c3, two weeks. Yeah. so easy. Yeah, so if these crusty old dogs in the nonprofits, they want to do something about it, they should probably advocate, do some public policy work and, and try to lock down, <laughs> make it more difficult to start It used to be more difficult, and then they made it easier. Yeah, they just made ago. it easier. Yeah. So then, like, however, I guess you could also look at that and it's like, well, just like in a free market system, one size doesn't fit all, and, and there are new solutions that might mm -hmm. be coming out. But... But um, I still would would argue. Here's the problem: that the, these folks that are getting their nonprofit in two weeks, they don't really do that comprehensive environmental scan like they're supposed to. Mm -hmm. They have not connected the dots with all the services that are going on, and so they're like, "I'm going to serve the homeless," and you know, right. at, in isolation, you know. So right, yeah. right, and that just never works. It just never. Yeah, and I know that's what I did. You know, I just didn't, didn't even think about it. Mm -hmm. Just go ahead and start it, you know? Yeah, and I, I think that's pretty common. And so that's why it's like the caution, wait a minute, don't start a nonprofit yet. Right, right. Because even though you want to be part of something big like that, you can join something big like that. Yeah, yeah, get a feel for it. Look, yeah, look, go out and volunteer know. for them. Yeah, learn the language. It's all, every, every, every sort of cause area has its own language. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can learn enough to connect the dots of, 
it's really that's really what it takes is yeah. sort of understanding getting the lay of the land so yeah oh exactly exactly mm -hmm. well i have an idea for you which i won't mention oh, yeah. online because that wouldn't be right so <laughs> normally i do things that aren't right but this i'm going to hold off i mean i have a great idea for you that i think it's a great idea hopefully you will too but i'm going to share with you after we get off of here right. yeah cool. it's Yay. about your growth Ooh. and fast growth Yay! just wait till you hear what janelle's got <laughs> coming up <laughs> So what do we have here? Catherine, nice interview, ladies. Thank you Hi, so Kathleen. much. So you guys, um, Janelle is just, like I said, just a wealth of knowledge and reach out to her affordable freelance. If you found this information to be valuable, please share it out to your page. And then is there anything you want to leave with that's like that golden, golden nugget? Hmm. If you know how to be a good friend, you can be an excellent fundraiser. You, I mean, what does that mean to be a good friend? It means that you learn, you, you know your friend's names and you spell them right. <laughs> yeah, Janelle, J-A-N-E-L-L-E, -L -L -E, right? And it's, Janelle. You know, you think about the nonprofit and how it can be a good friend uh, to its supporters. And so that means you have to have a donor database. So, uh, you know, just think about it that way. Your nonprofit has got to love on the community and, and you ultimately will get what you give. There you go. I love that because um, relationships are the key because you're not doing business with a business, you're doing business with people. Yes, that's because right. Even though the nonprofit is a business, it's made up of people. Yeah, and, and sometimes when you say grant, get a grant, it's like, there's people on the other side of that that are right. that they love their, your cause. They care what you're you're doing, and you should know who they are instead of just thinking about the, the money. You know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Stop being money hungry and money grubby. So, well, I yeah. mean, it's, oh. you know, you need it, but you know. yeah, but not like uh, yeah. So yeah, don't be rude of all evil. <laughs> don't be one of those. One of those salesy weirdos. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. That's, don't be yeah, that. Don't person. be a bottom feeder. Yeah, a bottom feeder. There we go. I like that. <laughs> awesome. So this is Linda West with Living Live with Linda, and I'm going to be doing a lot more interviews here on my page. So please go ahead and like my business page, Living Live with Linda, and you know keep informed of all the interviews that I have coming up. And I can't wait till Janelle shares with you guys what I have planned for her. <laughs> It's going to be awesome. It's going to be so awesome. It's going to, it's going to, yeah, just, okay. So we'll see you guys later. Bye. Have a great day.